offer you a very warm welcome on behalf of St. Peter's Church for our carol service this evening. Uh, there are those of you in church, those of you in the hall, there may be some outside in the cold, and especially to those of you who are watching with us at home, welcome to you all. May I ask that you keep your masks on throughout the service, and at the end, please remain in your seats until you are asked to leave. There will be no announcements during the service, but please stand, if you are able to, for the carols and remain seated for everything else. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with right, justice and righteousness from that time on and forever.
loving God, you have come to us in Christ. So now we come to you to offer our worship, to hear your word, and to reflect on your love. Help us through all we share today to hear the story of Christmas speaking to us as though for the first time. May familiar and well-loved words take on new meaning so that we may share the elation of Mary and the excitement felt by the shepherds. May what was news of great joy for them bring joy likewise for us this and every day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The second Bible reading is taken from Luke chapter 1, starting to read at verse 26, the birth of Jesus foretold. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who has And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord.
Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 24, the birth of Jesus Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Oh, 
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn.
apologies. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the, shepherd, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it was were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered upon them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. The word became flesh. In the beginning, the living expression, the word, was already there. And the living expression, the word, was with God, yet fully God. They were together, face to face, in the very beginning. And through his creative inspiration, this living expression made all things, for nothing has existence apart from him. A fountain of life was in him, for his life is light for all humanity. And this light never fails to shine through darkness, light that darkness could not overcome. Then a man appeared who was sent from God, a messenger named John, for he came as a witness to point the way to the light of life and to help everyone believe. John was not that light, but he came to show who is, for he was merely a messenger to speak the truth about the light. For the perfect light of truth was coming into the world and shine upon everyone. He entered into the world he created, yet the world was unaware. He came to the people he created, to those who should have received him, but they did not recognize him. But to those who embraced him and took hold of his name, he gave authority to become the children of God. He was not born by the joining of human parents or from natural means or by a man's desire, but he was born of God. And so the living word became a man and lived among us. We gazed upon his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, overflowing with tender mercy and truth. Well, can I add my greeting to Helen's from earlier and welcome you all to this service. Um, first thing I'd like to say is the choir have done extremely well, given that uh, the, the challenges we've had this year. So can you give them a round of applause? <laughs> now, if you're at home, some of those applauses sounded slightly muted because some people have still got their gloves on. And also to those who have decorated church as well, it's been, it's, it's glorious to be able to, to see the colours and the lights. And if you are sat near a window and there are candles there, if you smell burning, please blow it out. <laughs> Let's pray. Almighty God, your living word came into this world. May your spirit blow through our hearts now so that we might proclaim him as Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, at the vicarage, uh, kicking, cooking duties are shared. Not equally, I must admit. But on occasions, I have the honour of plating up on my own. And my efforts are sometimes greeted with the words, well, that looks a bit of a mess. <laughs> and let's be honest. If we look at the world today, we could say the same thing. It's all a bit of a mess, be it our individual lives, our communities, our nation, and internationally. We thought the mess of the pandemic was over, and Christmas 2021 was going to be back to normal. But the last few days have made us think again. Maybe our finances, maybe our relationships are a bit of a mess. And what about the way we treat the stranger in our land today? That can't really be described as fair, generous and merciful. It's all a bit of a mess. And indeed, Christmas can often become messy, especially some of us who now have grandchildren. <laughs> but that has always been true, because the first Christmas was a bit of a mess. Let's just think about it. Firstly, physically. 
Jesus' birth was a bit of a mess. It didn't happen at home or in a hospital. There was no midwife present. It didn't happen in a clean environment, but in a messy animal stall. And even when Jesus had been born, there was no nice 100 pound plus Moses basket for him to be laid in. No, just a manger, an animal feeding trough. Physically messy. But secondly, it was socially messy for Mary and Joseph. Their place in society was now all messed up. Mary would have been a social outcast for being pregnant outside of marriage at that time. Family turned away, friends nowhere, and airbrushed from all community activities. But that wasn't the biggest aspect of this mess. The bigger problem was that Joseph knew that he was not responsible for Mary's pregnancy. What would you have done if you were Joseph? But remember, at the heart of the Christmas story, there is a loving God who doesn't leave us in the mess. He has a solution and a promise, and more of which we shall come to find in a moment. But to a desperate Joseph, who believes he has been betrayed and humiliated, on the brink of separation from Mary, God sends an angel with an instruction to believe Mary. For this child is the solution to the universal mess. He is the promised Messiah. The nation of Israel had been waiting for the promised rescuer for over 600 years to come and sort out the mess. But the problem was that they were looking in the wrong place for the wrong type of rescuer. Isn't it often the case that the solution to a problem comes from somewhere you don't expect it? The nativity story may seem a mess, but it is the account of the coming of the Messiah. As the angels reminded the shepherds, the saviour of the world had been born. The deliverer, the liberator, the rescuer was asleep in a food trough, in an animal stall, in the backwater town of Bethlehem. This king wasn't in a palace, but in a stable. The Christmas story tells us that the the Messiah wasn't some self-made man or aristocratic lord, nor was he a politician or superhero or war veteran. The source of rescue for the world was no vaccine or philosophy, but a baby, a baby born of Mary, who is the Son of God. Yes, a human, but Jesus is also God. But he didn't descend into the world to take power, but he came down as a baby to show God's love. As Sir John Betjeman's poem described, and is it true, this most tremendous tale of all, seen in a stained glass window's hue, a baby in an ox's stool, the maker of stars and sea, became a child on earth for me. As the angels declared, God himself has come to our world as one of us to rescue us from the mess. And this is good news. No, God isn't going to pay off your mortgage or give you the perfect Christmas present. But this baby, this Messiah, is good news. Because he comes with a message that contains a promise for today, tomorrow, and forever. Into the mess, the Messiah brings a message for you and for me. 
no matter who we are, what we have done, or what society thinks of us. It's a message of hope and joy. Because of his great love for us, Jesus the Messiah took all our mess on himself on the cross that first Easter. He paid the price for our mess. The one who didn't need to, chose to, to release us forever from the mess. But this promise from the angels of good news that will cause great joy is hard to believe 2,000 years on today because the mess of this world doesn't seem to have been sorted. And if anything, it appears to be getting worse. Climate change, injustice, the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. This promise, you see, is not about the temporary things of this world, like money, success, even happiness or health. But it is a promise of an eternal relationship because the Messiah has paid the price for our mess. We can have a loving relationship with God today through our mortal lives and forever in heaven. And it's not just available to a few good people who became saints in stained glass windows, but it is offered to everyone. For God so loves everything and everybody that he sent his son into the world so that all that believe in him will not perish, but can share life with God forever. What was at the end of the angel's words to the shepherds? Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all people. All of you in church, all of me, the choir, all behind, all of you over in the church hall, all watching at home. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people. It is good news for every single person who has been created. But it needs to be responded to. It can't be ignored. In our own strength, we mess up. And we stay messed up. But will we let our pride stop us from reaching out to the Messiah, to Jesus? Take that step of humility, for he can rescue us. Let's get real. Let's see the mess. Let's see the Messiah. And let us hear the message of Christmas and truly accept the blessing of the gift of Jesus. The Saviour of the world has been born for you and for me. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that you came to earth at that first Christmas. Thank you for coming as the Messiah to rescue us from all the mess. We are sorry for all the mess we have caused in the world. Please forgive us our sins. Thank you that you died on the cross to pay the price for our mess and provide a way back into an eternal loving relationship with you. Thank you for this message of good news that is for everyone. Jesus, open our hearts to you tonight. Come into the bubble of our lives as Messiah so that we may know your pardon for the past, your presence with us today and life with you forever. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The choir haven't quite finished yet.
Let us pray. Living God, as we journey with the Holy Family to Bethlehem, we pray for all who make forced journeys. Give them strength to carry on and courage to walk the road ahead. As we hear the innkeeper say there is no room, we pray for refugees for whom there is no country. Gather them to yourself and keep them free from harm. As we contemplate that first Christmas night, we pray for those with nowhere to lay their head. Comfort them in their need and uphold them in their plight. As we listen to the cry of the infant king, we pray for children everywhere born into poverty. Wrap them in your love and uphold them in your tender mercy. As we remember the fear of the shepherds in the presence of the angels, we pray for all who are afraid to look ahead. Reassure them with your presence and embolden them to face the future. May all know the presence and hope of knowing Jesus. We ask this prayer in his name. Amen. Amen. Sovereign God, we thank you that you have given us good news in Christ, a message that has thrilled generations across the years, uplifting, encouraging, challenging and renewing. We pray for the church around the world as it celebrates the birth of Christ. Bless all those who are entrusted with Christian ministry, that your word might be proclaimed with truth and courage. This Christmas, as we remember those who journeyed to the stable, we pray for all who are seeking you and those who are leading the way. May God grant unto us whatever we need, that we might serve him in showing his love and compassion to our world, allowing the light of God to illuminate the dark places with grace and truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord God, the Advent season reminds us that we live by hope. Hope in anticipation of the coming of the Messiah, the promised one who comes from God to bring good news of salvation, the expected one who will establish justice for all who are in need, the liberator who will free us from our estrangement, for the Messiah will bring a new day for all God's people. We await the day of salvation, of justice and of liberation. We await the new day where all people will proclaim God's goodness and will know the fulfilment of God's will for all creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us, we fix our eyes on you today in a world that feels uncertain and unsafe. Bring your wisdom and guidance to our governments as they make challenging decisions that will impact nations. Show them how to protect and support all people. Draw near to those who are unwell today. Be their comfort in their weariness and their support in their weakness. For those who are mourning the loss of someone they love, give your consolation and loving support. Guard our minds and bodies from the anxiety and fear that this current uncertainty brings. You are the Prince of Peace who surrounds and protects. Hear our prayers and use them and us to bring peace, joy, love and hope into the lives of those for whom we have prayed. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now we join together in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
the supremacy of Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviour. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you have heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. This is the word of the Lord.
And as we stand a final prayer, let us pray. May the joy of the angels, the wonder of the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child fill our hearts this Christmas time. And may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us now, this Christmas, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Happy Christmas.